Air traffic controllers and in route centers and TRACONs around the nation are responsible for the safety of thousands of aircraft every day. Even though altitude can be used to separate aircraft, a radar scope is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional world in which three miles or 1,000 feet may not seem very far at all to a pilot at altitude and flying at hundreds of knots. Merging target procedures exist to provide an extra layer of safety by notifying pilots of nearby traffic and assuring them that proper separation is being applied. My name is Kyle Warner. I'm an air traffic control student here at the University of North Dakota. Applying merging target procedures and issuing traffic calls are two of the most common procedures used in radar classes and in the real world. We will explain what those procedures are, when and how they must be applied, and demonstrate the correct phraseology that must be used. Today, on ATCAST. Let's take a look at what the phrase merging targets means. This information can be found in the 7110.65 in paragraph 5-1-8. These rules do not apply to aircraft established in a holding pattern. Merging targets are defined as radar identified targets that appear likely to merge and are at the minimum vertical separation. Essentially, merging targets are aircraft that will pass over or under each other and are separated by the minimum required altitude. Merging target procedures must be applied in the following situations. To all aircraft at or above 10,000 feet. To all turbojet aircraft at any altitude. To all presidential aircraft at any altitude. Merging target procedures consist of two elements in the terminal radar environment. The first element is a traffic call. It is mandatory, and if both aircraft are radar identified and under the control of the same controller, he or she must issue the traffic call to both aircraft. The traffic call contains six elements, which must be said in the following order. The word traffic, the location of the traffic relative to the aircraft you are talking to. This is given as a clock position, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and so on. Remember that this is relative to the aircraft, not to you. The distance of the traffic from the aircraft you are talking to. This distance is given in miles. The direction of the traffic, northbound, westbound, southeastbound, and so on. For aircraft approaching each other, you may say opposite direction, or same direction for aircraft heading in the same direction. The traffic's aircraft type, Boeing 727, Airbus A320, Cessna 172, heavy Boeing 747, and so on. If the aircraft is a heavy, state the word heavy before the type. Note that if one of the aircraft is a heavy, it might be appropriate to issue cautionary wake turbulence advisory to the other aircraft. The altitude of the traffic. If the traffic is level, say level at whatever the altitude is. If the traffic is climbing or descending, say climbing through or descending through its current altitude and state its final altitude. For example, if the traffic is descending through 7,000 feet for 3,000 feet and you are issuing traffic, you would say passing through 7,000 for 3,000 or leaving 7,000 for 3,000. If the traffic is not radar identified but is showing a mode C altitude, say altitude indicates followed by the depicted altitude. If it is not showing any altitude information, say altitude unknown. Here are some examples of traffic calls. American 424 Heavy, traffic 1 o'clock, 4 miles northbound, Boeing 737 at 900,000. American 424 Heavy, traffic in sight. United 329, traffic 11 o'clock, 3 miles eastbound, heavy MD 11 at 10,000. Traffic in sight, United 329. Connell 411 Heavy, traffic 1 o'clock, 5 miles northbound, type unknown, altitude indicates 3,500. Continental 411 Heavy, we have traffic in sight. Feeder Flight 442, traffic 12 o'clock, 10 miles, opposite direction, Boeing 757, level 1, 2000. Feeder Flight 442, has traffic in sight. Continental 558, traffic 12 o'clock, 8 miles, opposite direction, CRJ, level 1, 3000. Continental 558, we have traffic in sight. American 131, traffic 6 o'clock, 3 miles, same direction. 
heavy Airbus A310 out of 12,400 for 12,000. American 131, we have the traffic in sight. Delta 310 heavy, traffic 12 o'clock, 2 miles, same direction. ATR 72, level at 11,000. Delta 310 heavy, traffic in sight. United 329, traffic 3 o'clock, 3 miles. Northeast bound, heavy MD-11, climbing through 8,000 for 1,2,000, caution weight turbulence. United 329, traffic in sight. American 424 heavy, traffic 10 o'clock, 2 miles eastbound, Boeing 737, level at 7,000. American 424, the traffic in sight. Northwest 323, traffic 11 o'clock, 5 miles, westbound CRJ, level at 8,000. Northwest 323, the traffic in sight. Feeder flight 442, traffic 1 o'clock, 4 miles, southbound A320, level at 900,000. Feeder flight 442, traffic in sight. The second element of merging target procedures is to provide vectors around traffic if requested by the pilot. Note that it is up to the pilot to ask for the service, but you must issue the traffic call in a timely fashion so that the pilot has time to decide if a vector is necessary. If aircraft are separated by more than the vertical separation minimum, you can still issue traffic if you feel it is necessary. Remember that in a Piper Warrior, a Boeing 747 looks pretty big, even if it is 2,000 feet above you. Now for a quick review. Merging targets are defined as targets that appear likely to merge and are at the vertical separation minimum. Merging target procedures consist of two elements in the terminal radar environment, a mandatory traffic call and vectors if requested by the pilot. These procedures must be applied unless the aircraft are established in a holding pattern to the following types of radar identified aircraft. All aircraft at or above 10,000 feet, all turbojet aircraft regardless of the altitude, all presidential aircraft regardless of altitude. The traffic call consists of the following elements. The word traffic, the location of the traffic in relation to the aircraft you are talking to, the distance of the traffic from the aircraft you are talking to, the traffic's direction of flight, the traffic's aircraft type and the word heavy if needed, and the altitude of the traffic. Traffic calls must be made in a timely fashion to allow the pilot to determine if a vector is necessary. On behalf of UND Air Traffic Control, the Student Air Traffic Controller Association, and the Aerospace Network, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. My name is Kyle Warner. Frequency change approved. For more information on UND Air Traffic Control and to see other videos in this series, visit www.aero.und.edu or search for ATCAST on iTunes University.